Hi, welcome to my video where today we're going to be talking about how to solve multi-step equations. These equations have just one variable in them on one side. I have another video where if you need help solving equations where variables are on both sides, that's a separate video from this. But right now we're going to solve multi-step equations, equations where it's obviously just more than one simple step. We have to look at it carefully. We definitely have some options as well, and I'll discuss those options with you. Um, so follow along with me. Feel free to take out a pencil and paper, or if you have a whiteboard and a dry erase marker to do the problems along with me, feel free to pause, play, see how you do, and um, let's go. Let's take a look. So my first note, my really important note, my only note with a star next to it says, check the number of constants and variables on each side. Now we should know that constants is just a fancy word for numbers. Okay, so if I say what's on both sides of the equation and you see numbers on both sides, that would be the constants. We're not gonna have variables on both sides right now. Um, so that's actually not gonna be the answer for this video, but we are gonna see that we do have constants on both sides. We have to determine which one we have to remove in order to isolate the variable and solve for that variable. So I've got a bunch of problems here along with me. Again, feel free to pause or just follow right along. So problems one and two. Number one says negative 2n plus 10 equals 30. So what I would ask you is, what's each term? The negative 2n, that's a variable because it's negative two times the variable n. 10 is a constant. 30 is a constant. What do I have on both sides of my equation? Constants or variables? You would see that we have constants on both sides. We have a constant of 10 and we have a constant of 30. If I have constants on both sides of my equation, then that's what I know I need to remove first, but I have to decide which one. Do I remove the 10 or do I remove the 30? Now the whole idea is to get the variable to be by itself. So we always wanna remove the constant that's on the same side as my variable. So here, if I had to pick between the 10 and the 30, I would want to remove the 10, this positive 10. I wouldn't want to remove the 30 because if I did, then there'd be nothing there on the right-hand side of my equation. So in order to get rid of this 10, which it's positive, we need to subtract. We learned in one-step equations that whatever you do to one side, you must do to the other. So if I subtract 10 from the left-hand side of my equation, I must subtract 10 from the right-hand side. Positive 10 and negative 10 simplify each other out to zero, but we don't write that. We simply bring everything down. So negative 2n gets brought down equals 30 minus 10 is 20. And now this brings us to our one-step equation. If I've got negative 2n equals 20, negative 2 and n, they're side by side. Side by side means multiply. I need to divide both sides, the opposite operation of multiplying, by that negative 2. It's a really important deal. If this 2 is negative, then you better be dividing by a negative 2. Otherwise, you're going to get a wrong answer. Divide both sides by negative 2. A negative 2 divided by negative 2 simplifies out to 1. So it's just n, and then equals negative 10. And now, of course, I can always go check. I always encourage my students to do more of a mental check instead of writing it all out, especially with nice numbers like these. So if I was to substitute back in a negative 10, negative 2 times negative 10 is positive 20. 20 plus 10 is 30. I just checked it. This negative 10 gives me a true statement. Let's look at the next one. 4 equals 3a minus 14. What do I have on both sides of my equation? Constants or variables? Constants. My constants are 4 and negative 14. Which constant would I need to remove to get the 3a to be by itself? The negative 14. How do we get rid of a negative 14? We add 14. And notice if I do it to one side of my equation, I have to do it to the other. 4 plus this 14 ends up giving me 18 equals 3a. Divide both sides by 3 because we want to get a by itself. I'll always cross these out too so you see what's happening, the whole point of it. And then once I have a by itself, it's equal to 6 and I can reverse my order. That's the symmetric property to write it in that order. Okay. Those have basically the exact same skill. Now we're going to look at a different skill. N, min, um, N divided by 3 minus 8 equals negative 2. So I would ask you, what do you have on both sides of the equation? Do you have constants or variables? You would say constants. I've got a negative 8 and a negative 2. Which one I would, would I remove to get this N to start to be by itself? 
the negative 8. How do you get rid of a negative 8? You would add 8. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to add 8 on both sides. And we're going to bring down what we have left. So this ends up being n over 3 is equal to negative 2 plus 8 is 6. Now, this is really a one-step equation. We know that if I do n divided by 3 and it's equal to 6, the opposite of dividing by 3 is to multiply by 3. That's how we undo that fraction. And we get n to be by itself. So we multiply both sides by 3. Because remember, this is really 3 over 1. And you learned cross-simplifying rules where these 3's will simplify out. So you're really just left with n over 1, which is just n. And 6 times 3 is my 18. Same skill here. What do you have on both sides? Constants or variables? Constants. Okay, I have a 5 and I have a 1. Which one do I need to remove to get the variable to be by itself? The 5. What kind of 5 is it? Positive. How do you get rid of a positive? You subtract. So if I subtract 5 on both sides, I'm left with x over 4 equals 1 minus 5 is negative 4. Now I didn't have this covered up, so that's my mistake there, but this is the equation that I would have had at that point. I need to get x by itself, but x is being divided by 4. So in order to get rid of that, I need to multiply both sides by 4. So those 4 simplify out, and x is equal to negative 16. All right, so now let's move on to a few more problems. Same idea. I have constants on both sides. Which constant do I need to remove, the 12 or the negative 7, to get this x to be by itself? It would be the positive 12. How do you get rid of a positive 12? You subtract. I think you're getting the point now. I bring down my negative x over 6, and it's set equal to negative 19. Now, the biggest deal here is that x is being divided by 6, but this fraction is negative. So I kind of want to kill two birds with one stone. And I want to multiply both sides of the equation by 6, so my 6 is eliminated out. But if I multiply it by 6, I'm still left with a negative x. So if I multiply both sides by a negative 6, think about what's going to happen here. My 6s will simplify out, and then a negative times a negative is going to leave me with a positive x, which is exactly what I want to have happen. And then my result is 114. Next one here. I've got constants on both sides. Which one do I need to remove to get m by itself? It would be this 6. Subtract 6 on both sides because it was a positive 6. I now have 2 thirds m equals negative 18. We know the way to undo 2 thirds is to multiply both sides by 3 over 2. They're reciprocal. That way, my 3s and my 2s simplify each other out and negative 18 times 3 over 2. Now, what I teach my students as well is when you're multiplying an integer by a fraction, you simply multiply by the numerator, then divide by the denominator. You multiply by the numerator, divide by the denominator. So you would do negative 18 times 3, which is negative 54, and then negative 54 divided by 2 is negative 27. You can also divide first and then multiply after. So you could do negative 18 divided by 2, which is negative 9, and then take that answer, and multiply it by 3 on top. Negative 9 times 3 is negative 27. Um, the other strategy I technically could have done here is called clearing fractions. And I really enjoy teaching clearing fractions, especially when the problems get very complicated. In this case, they're not too, too complicated. But if I have this equation, negative um, x over 6 plus 12 equals negative 7. And I notice that I have a fraction here. It's really negative 1 sixth in front of this x. What I can do is I can actually multiply both sides of the entire equation by that denominator, or a common denominator if you have two different denominators. So if I multiply both sides of the entire equation by a negative 6, I want to show you what will end up happening here. Negative 6 times negative x over 6, so the 6's cancel out, and you're left with negative times a negative is a positive x. Then negative 6 times 12 is negative 72. And then I have equals negative 7 times negative 6 is positive 42. And then I would add 72 on both sides. And 
look what I get. X equals 114, which is the exact same result I got here. So this is a process called clearing fractions. You would multiply both sides of the equation by whatever denominator you see, or if there's two different denominators, then you would do the least common multiple of those two. So if you had a denominator of two and a denominator of three, you would multiply both sides by six and so on. Okay, so that's a pretty good strategy. That's pretty good to use. I'm gonna scooch this mess over so we can look at these last two problems. Okay, now C minus five divided by four is equal to three. If I said to you, are there constants on both sides? We'd sort of say no in the way this looks because think about it. This is not a negative 5. It's negative 5 over 4, right? So that is a constant there, but it's not broken apart that way. What I really have in this case is a situation where I don't need to add or subtract first. What I need to do is actually multiply first. If I want to get C minus 5 by itself, and right now it's being divided by 4, what I need to do is multiply both sides by 4. Because if I do that, look what's going to happen here. My 4s would simplify out. And I'm left with C minus 5 equals 12. And now I'm adding. The other problems we were doing like adding and subtracting first and then multiplying or dividing. Now it's kind of the opposite. So let's look at the next one. B plus 1 divided by 3 equals 2. If I want to start getting this B plus 1 expression by itself and it's being divided by 3, I need to multiply both sides by 3 so that my 3 simplify out. I'm left with B plus 1 equals 6 and then I easily get my solution answer. Okay, a couple more problems for us. R plus 13 over 12 plus two equals three. Do I have constants on both sides of my equation? Yep, I've got a two and a three. Which one do I need to remove? The positive two. So if I subtract two on both sides, I'm then left with R plus 13 over 12 equals 1. And now I kind of have the exact same problem that I just did in the last step. I have this problem where the whole numerator is being divided by 12. So the way to undo that is to multiply both sides by 12. That way those 12s are gone. And I'm left with R plus 13 equals 12, which then gives me negative 1 as a result. Same idea here. Do I have constants on both sides? Yes. Which constant do I need to remove? The negative seven. Because so if I remove that, I'll start to get that a to be by itself. So now I have 15 minus a over three equals negative nine. How do I start to get this expression at the top to be isolated and by itself? I would need to multiply both sides by whatever my denominator is. So I'm gonna go ahead and multiply both sides by three. And if I do that, I now have 15 minus a equals negative 27. I need to get a by itself. I have constants on both sides still. I've got a 15 and a negative 27. Which one should I remove to get a by itself? The 15. So I'm going to go ahead and subtract 15. That means those 15s are now gone. This is a big deal. Make sure you bring down that negative a. Negative a is equal to negative 42. Negative 27 minus 15 is negative 42. Now remember, when you have a negative a, that really means there's a negative one in front of that a. So in order to get rid of that, I need to divide or multiply both sides by a negative one so that those, eight, that those negative ones can be gone. And I'm left with positive 42. I have a couple problems, two problems left. Um, actually, three problems left, my apologies that we're gonna take a look at, but I want you to take a moment and see if you can pause your screen and try to set up the equations for these three problems. Okay, see if you can at least just set up what the equation would look like. Go. Okay, I hope you set up the equations and if you didn't pause, all right, but let's play along. Let's see what happens. So this equation should be 2x plus 4 equals 6. This equation, 7 less than, than is one of those flipping words. If you watch my other videos, you know I make a really big deal about than being a flipping word. So 7 less than 4 times the number is 13. Okay, if I go ahead and solve these, pretty easy what the work should look like. Again, you can always pause the screen to take a closer look. 
Find three consecutive odd integers. I have a video about consecutive odd integers in my writing equations lesson. You can take a look at if you're unsure how to do this problem. We always say n is the first integer. Odd integers skip by twos. So we would say n plus two is the second integer. n plus four is the third integer. We would say that those three should add up to 117. If we're combining like terms, n plus n plus n is 3n. 2 plus 4 is 6. So we have 3n plus 6. We've got constants on both sides. We know what to do here. Subtract 6. Divide both sides by 3. And so n is 37. So then if n is 37, my first number is 37. That would mean my second number would have to be 2 more, which is 39, the next odd integer. And then the third integer would be 41. And if I was to add these up, I would get that 117. I hope this video was helpful for you. Thank you so much for watching.